Hey everyone and welcome to Sketching with Sarah and in today's video I'm going to be sharing my week one of Mermaid 2020. I compiled all of my mixed media speed paints and speed draws I guess because not all of them I'm painting but time lapses nonetheless. I also have an update for a bigger project I'm working on so stick around to the end of the video to see my progress on that. In my last video, I did say I would be posting that project today, but it is a larger project than I anticipated, and I really want to do a good job, so I decided to record the process and at least show you where I'm at with it in this video. So in this year's Mermaid, I decided to use the Mermaid prompt list on the official website, and on day one, the prompt is celebration. Now when I first heard this prompt, the first celebration I could think of is my graduation celebration, and because of this pandemic, it will be quite different than I wish it was, but a celebration nonetheless. I decided to use this mermaid concept to show the isolation while still in a way connected with this water or sense of accomplishment that we all achieved. I had the privilege of working with and around so many talented artists as peers and also my professors that I look up to and admire, and I couldn't be more grateful for the experience I had. I learned so much and although it's a little sad we can't celebrate arm in arm, just nice to know that we are still connected. Maybe not with water, but connected nonetheless with our accomplishments. I decided to do everything in Mermaid either on a very small scale mixed media or a simple pencil sketch instead of trying to go nuts each day so I can keep up the endurance to be able to complete Mermaid. I used the same tactic in my Inktober 2019 challenge. And it's amazing how relieving that stress to make everything perfect and every drawing extravagant can really make you excited to just continue on with the challenge and be proud of yourself that you made it so far. If you're interested to see my Inktober creations, check out my sketchbook tour playlist in my description or in the icon at the end of this video. I have a lot of really fun animal hybrids I made based on all the prompts of Inktober. So I'd encourage you to go check those out. Overall, I'm all right with how this one turned out since it is such a small scale and in my initial thumbnail sketch, I did want to put more mermaids in the background and in the distance just to show the magnitude of just how many people are graduating this semester and symbolize it through mermaids in that way. But since this was such a small scale to work on for the final piece, I decided to just stick to two. It still shows the distance and the connection between them just enough so you get the idea. I also may have gone a little too far with the long hair, but you know, they're mermaids, right? Next up on Mermaid Day 2, the prompt is Warrior. I decided to keep it the same pandemic theme and just use it for an appreciation piece for the brave men and women who are on the front lines of this pandemic. I really appreciate all that they do and I'm grateful we have them to help control and heal people affected by this virus. I decided to go with a Wonder Woman pose and some relevant accessories for this mermaid just to make it a little bit more obvious where I'm going with this piece. It's a little muddy and the anatomy is a little cringy, but overall I'm alright with how it turned out because of the concept, and it is a fictional being, so you could argue anatomy isn't super important. I also have to keep reminding myself that I'm treating this mermaid as an exercise to draw every day, and to draw mermaids because I love mermaids, so I'm really not trying to make a masterpiece each day. Day three is sunset, so I decided to do a pretty basic depiction of a sunset and a mermaid silhouette. I figured I'd take advantage of the watercolor effects in the colors in the sky and in the water. I will say that the part where I filled in the mermaid silhouette, I used a tiny little micron pen, I think it was 03 or 05, when I could have easily used a big sharpie or an ink wash, but I did find it surprisingly therapeutic to zone out and color her while listening to some interviews from cases I've been following here on YouTube for a while now. It allowed me to kind of turn my brain off art-wise, but really focus on what I was listening to. Day 4's prompt was Star Wars, and of course I figured since everyone was going to probably make it relate to the franchise in some way, I would try to be a little bit more creative and take it as a spin for Starfish having a fight or a war, star war, starfish war, and having a mermaid trying to break it up. I really enjoyed making the expressions on these little starfishes' faces and the sort of cartoony style that I achieved in this drawing. So although the anatomy in the upper part of this mermaid could have been a little bit better, I didn't do much planning, so I feel like it went all right for how much 
time I spent on it. I really did just kind of dive in. <laughs> like a mermaid. Day five's prompt is royalty, and I didn't want to do the stereotypical royal throne type queen. So I basically took this as an excuse to draw Georgette from Oliver and Company. Because she is a queen, so. I must say, I really did enjoy having a closer look at her character design. And I'm kind of mad at myself that I hated her so much as a kid, because she basically slays, and she knows it. But on the other hand, if I hated her as a kid, that means that the character design, and the voice, and the attitude, and everything was successful for the narrative of the movie, so good job, Disney. Day 6 prompt is Tsunami. Again, I decided to take this excuse to draw some fan art of Nami from League of Legends because she's one of my favorite champs and her ultimate is basically a giant wave or tsunami, so I guess it fits. I struggled a lot through this piece and I'm only going to include the first like half of this progress because it does get messy and it's a lot of back and forth trying to fix the anatomy that I struggled with. And since I was basically working in mostly permanent medium. I kind of took the cop-out approach and sharpied the background and had some very very heavy ink line work to basically reshape the whole form to make it look at least a little bit more accurate. I went into this piece thinking okay I'm just gonna take a few minutes on this it's not gonna take very long I really have to work on this project so I can finish it for this deadline and because I didn't really do much planning literally at all because I ended up spending so much more time trying to fix everything and being frustrated than if I just planned it really well and worked on it from beginning to end with no struggles along the way. Mermaid Day 7 was Tranquil. And since it was the last day I had to really work on my portfolio to graduate, I decided to keep it very, very simple and fun and draw my Porky Pufferfish and Hedgerfish hybrid guys because they both have quills or spikes and, you know, tranquil. It is a bit of a stretch, but also I feel like these characters look worry-free and tranquil in their friendship, so I guess that kind of works out. In the last video, I was a little ahead of myself and I was a little too excited for this idea and I announced that I'd have the full thing done by today, but it just wasn't realistic with the timeline of graduating the same week. So because of that, I thought I would at least share where I'm at right now in this project so you can get as excited about it as I am. So I decided with sketching the animal hybrids I wanted on each nesting and then transferred those sketches onto the dolls themselves with a ballpoint pen. I decided on an octophant, a bippo, lemuram, and snailk. Just because I feel like the sizes in comparison with each other fit well with the sizing of the dolls and it would give me a fun challenge to try and cram these designs into the very iconic nesting doll shape. I will say that after having this idea and since it is a non-essential item, it wasn't available on Amazon so I used the Mercari app to find someone selling it for cheap. I also found someone selling acrylic paints for pretty cheap too so I'm going to be using those in the next video when I paint these. As soon as I received these dolls in the mail, I noticed a lot of splintery issues and I'm sure it would be able to be covered up just fine with acrylic paint, but I decided to take some extra time and care to sand it anyway, so here's a time lapse of me doing that. I used 120 grit sandpaper to sand the rims and the insides and the bottoms of the biggest doll to start off with, and I decided to not go any finer with that grit. At least on the outside, I might still go back in and on the inside and the rims so that they really fit together nicely and are easy to come apart and put back together without feeling like you have to force them. But for now, I just sanded it with 120 grit and get those rough splinters out of the way so that while I'm painting, I don't have to worry about that. I'm hoping to have this project all filmed and ready to go by Friday, but at the very least have the video all recorded so that I can go back and edit it for maybe next next Friday's upload, and next week have my Mermaid Week 2. But that's still a little bit up in the air, it just depends on how much I can get done and the timeline of things going on around me. I also wanted to mention that I did rush this Mermaid Week so I could move on really quickly and continue to work on my final pieces for my portfolio. Graduating is a pretty top priority for me this past week and because of it I didn't spend much time each day on Mermaid as I would have liked to, but at least I drew every single day which is very important to me. Now that I'm graduated I'm very excited for all the future videos I have planned for this channel and the content I'm going to be making in the future. So I can't wait to be able to spend more time on my content. 
As always, I did include all the links to the supplies I used in this video in the description below, so check those out if you're interested or curious to know. I upload every single Friday, and I hope you enjoyed my week one of Mermaid 2020. Don't forget, I do upload every single Friday and have some really excited things planned for the future. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. And get those rough and get those rough splinter and get those rough spin <laughs>